Hello again. Some myths associated with slavery and immigration to Britain are so deeply entrenched now that when one attempts to challenge them, people are apt to look at you as though you're a revisionist trying to foist off fake history on them. The reason for this is that the lies have been repeated so often and by so many authoritative sources that they simply cannot believe that they have been misled. Teachers tell them these things, the royal family tell them, historians tell them, politicians tell them. This is quite scary when telling the truth becomes a revolutionary act which will make people hate you or view you as a madman or liar. I've mentioned all this before many times, but I've recently come across a new book which has been purchased by many English schools. Here it is, Civil Rights Stories, Racial Equality. It's published by Franklin Watts, who used to be quite a respectable educational um, publisher at one time. It sounds innocuous enough, doesn't it? Racial Equality. Who could argue against that? But it contains two very old lies which are universally accepted as fact in the modern world. I could remark unfavourably on almost every page of this awful production, but I want to focus on just a couple of things because they are so familiar. On page 10, we read... In the 18th century, millions of black Africans were captured by European slave traders. They were marched to the coast in chains. But right there is a lie. The black Africans were not captured by European slave traders at all. They were captured by black slave traders, and it was by those black Africans who marched them to the coast. They then sold them to the Europeans. That's why it's called the triangular trade, because the Europeans bought the slaves, exchanging them for manufactured goods which they had brought from England. The Europeans did not capture black Africans at all. It's not true. This is no minor point because it alters the whole complexion of the matter when we're thinking of the transatlantic slave trade and it shows that black Africans were at least as culpable as white Europeans. In other words, it spreads the guilt pretty evenly. Then we have this on page 16. <clears throat> on the 22nd of June 1948, the HMT Empire Windrush sailed into Tilbury Docks in Essex, England. On board were around 500 black British Commonwealth citizens from the West Indies. After the Second World War, Britain did not have enough people to work in hospitals and on buses and trains. Many Windrush passengers had answered an, an advert to come and work in Britain. This is another direct lie. There was no advertisement to come and work in Britain. This claim regarding the Windrush has been repeated so often <clears throat> that even telling the truth about it makes it sound as though you must be wrong. In the thumbnail to this video, you may see the advertisement which appeared in the Jamaica Daily Gleaner for April the 13th, 1948. It simply reads, Passenger Opportunity to United Kingdom Troop Ship Empire Windrush Sailing about 23rd of May Fares, cabin class £48, troop deck £28, Royal Mail Lines, 8 Port Royal Street. That's it. It is not an advertisement to come and work in Britain at all. That is a complete fantasy. This particular falsehood is now told so often that I'm fighting and losing battle in correcting it. It is because our children are indoctrinated with this kind of false history that they feel so strongly about the supposed injustices carried out against black people. It's not their fault. Books like this one ensure that the process of brainwashing begins from the age of five and continues all the way through their school days. 
No wonder they refuse to accept the truth and regard videos like this one as being racist propaganda.